Okay. Tonight, tonight, a good evening, everyone, once more. And tonight, we are starting with um, tools that virtual assistants need to do their job properly. Um, last week, we stopped at the skills. But tonight we are starting, um, we are continuing with the, with the tools. We need to look at various tools. You need, to, you need to understand how to use or have experience or to have the awareness so that you will be able to practice very well as a virtual assistant. These are mainly office tools that will help you to work as a virtual assistant, if you are an administrative assistant working in a normal office, there's a lot of tools you need to do your job, like uh, need a printer, computer, and a lot of these are office tools. But here, these are the tools you need uh, to work as a virtual assistant. Let's uh, look at uh, them. We have a uh, record. We have time management um, tool, which is a time doctor. We have video conferencing tool for meeting and collaboration. This is a, we have a Zoom. We have communication Zoom, and uh, that is Slack. We have a customer's relationship management tools. We have a Salesforce and a Hub sports we have a uh, productivity management tools and they are microsoft 365 and google work space then we have travel and expense management tool which is concord we have graphic design tool and uh, on this, we, we are going to look at Canva. Uh, Adobe is very good as well. There are so many of them, but we'll, we'll look at Canva. If we have time, we'll look at Adobe as well. We have billing and invoicing tools. Uh, there are so many of them, so many, but we we'll just pick one. And uh, we are going to look at Invoicely. We have lead generation tool, and that is uh, counter.io. Please uh, put yourself on mute. So we have. Uh, we have a uh, data and security management tool. And there are so many of them, but we're going to look at uh, last pass. So let's move to Time Doctor. Time Doctor is a tool for uh, to monitor employees when they are working. It helps you to monitor your employees, track their time, automate tracking, and at the end of the day, we generate report for you. So it's a very powerful tool for remote workers. So it will help you to monitor your workers when they are doing working remotely, because you know, remote job, working from home, some people tend to abuse it so much. They will just uh, log in their computer and they will go and start doing other things. Uh, because you are not there to monitor them, to see, look at what they are doing. And that is not fair. Uh, but IT has taken uh, care of uh, everything. This kind of attitude has been taken care of by Time Doctor. So, uh, Time Doctor. 
uses uh, is a, a tracking reminder to tell employees to get back to work if they visit non-work sites like Facebook. Uh, some of you will be working, you just, uh, if, if, if you log into the system and you open another site, thinking that you can be smart and then be chatting on Facebook. And then one window you'll be, you say, after all, I've logged in in my one window. Time Doctor will detect all these things and tell you to go back to work. And Time Doctor will record these activities. So the employer will see what you are doing with your time they are paying you for. So Time Doctor, if you stop working, the Time Doctor turns off when you are not working. So that is what Time Doctor is. So if you are using Time Doctor, and some like some of the people that uh, you just leave your, your system open, with hope that uh, time is going and nobody is watching you. Once you stop working, the time doctor will stop recording. So time doctor record the active time. You really work on your, on the supposed stack, your stacks you are working. More, more especially if you are working on the, any specific project within a work, uh, environment. For instance, if you, if you are working with a base camp or you are working with um, uh, hub spots, if you, if, you are, if you are imputing data in hub spots, customers data uh, as, a, as a data uh, um, input uh, kind of when you stop uh, uh, doing that data entry, if you, if you are working on data entry, maybe you are working with uh, HubSpot. When you stop imputing data in the system and then uh, say I do, the time doctor will stop recording. And at the end of the day, what you are going to be paid is the number of hour you are you, you actual the time doctor actually recorded for you. So if you don't want to, if you stop, if you are playing around with time doctor, you are you are you are wasting your time. If you are serious, then you will, time doctor will record and you end your money. So that is how time doctor uh, works. So, but in a situation where you are you use time doctor and you work offline, maybe some particular uh, projects or some deliverable that you need to work on it um, offline, then time doctor will know. And after then, such hours can be added onto you. You know that most of the things we do, working remotely, we use um, applications and it will be configured and set in such a way that all the applications you are going to be using or all the websites you are going to be working with is um, added up in Time Doctor so that Time Doctor will track all of them. Like for instance, as a business analyst, if you are using Time Doctor, if you are doing your process mapping using um, draw.io or lucid charts. Time Doctor will automatically be recording what the number of hours you are working with um, lucid charts or draw.io. If you, if you are meant to be working with um, um, Basecamp, the number of hours you spend in Basecamp, Time Doctor will record it. So that is how he's recording everything you are doing. So at the end of the day, you get paid based on the number of hours that's been recorded. So and the, after everything, it will generate a report. You know, work the insights report. We provide a report on who is working and what they are working on. And that will be in real time. So you, these are the things 
time doctor record active hours work by day week or month daily productivity level attendance reporting schedule adherence real time activity tracking website and app usage number of projects and tasks completed projects timeline hours spent on projects screen capture and recording for proof of work idle uh, minutes and seconds so this is uh, how time doctor works so time doctor have a specific um of course, I want two people just to log it and see how it works. So there is a tutorial on Time Doctor Equally in YouTube. You can look; it's a very short tutorial. If you want to um, sign up on Time Doctor and they are struggling, I'll provide the link within the group um, chat so that you can use the link to watch the video. But we are going to have a quick look um in time doctor in real time so i will navigate to my browser to open the link for time doctor oh you are very you are very naughty in making noise See, I will impute timedoctor.com and they will bring um, this screen for me. So you can put your name, your email and password and you try it out, you log in. It will give you 15 days uh, period to try it and test how it looks like. So, I will log in with my Google account. So, and I already have an account already. So, but even if you don't have an account, you can still use your Google account automatically to log in. So, that is it. I'm inside Time Doctor now but it's not configured to monitor any project. And uh, it's not configured, there is no uh, users here. I didn't add any employee life. For instance, if I'm working with you guys as my employees, I will add all the users here and configure their, all the application you guys will be working on. And then Time Doctor will start tracking what you are doing and I'll be monitoring for what you are doing from my own end. Seeing the active hours all of you are working on, how many hours you spend on a base camp, how many hours you spend on a draw dot IO, lucid charts, VCO, and the rest of them, and how many hours you spend on TikTok and uh, Facebook and Twitter, chatting, not working. So this is the dashboard. So let's look at um, what you can do here. Under activity summary, this is how the interface for the activity summary. So under activity summary here, total time tracks will be here. But you see here, zero minute because there is no work here. I've not done anything and it's not configured to, to record on any work, any project. But if I create a project and configure it to manage the project and add all the applications that I need to, to track and work on, then we will start whenever I log in to start work, we'll start tracking what I'm doing. So here we see total time tracked 
um, idle minutes will be shown here. So how many minutes will be in idle will be shown. Unproductive website and app like Facebook, you will show here how many hours you spend on with Facebook. That will show your employer how disciplined or how, how stupid you are. Playing around when you should be working. Manual hours and added. If you need to add manual hours, you need to let your employ, employ, employer know, or employer must know that actually you are working on uh, some tasks that uh, need to be done out of uh, time, doctor. And after that, that time will be calculated and uh, added here because time doctor will generate time sheets they are going to use to pay you. So, and this is uh, the mobile time. So all these things are the general activity the time doctor will be recording when you start working, if you are configured within this uh, time doctor. So now let's look at uh, attendance. So this is going to be the attendance, the status, you worked or you didn't work, we show here the time of shift you did, um, when the shift started, and the uh, actual time starts. If the shift is supposed to start uh, by six o'clock, and the actual time you start, is seven o'clock, it means we are one hour late. He's going to record it. Uh, shift length, how many hours is he going to, each hour's shift is going to be recorded here. Expected hour, are you supposed to work for eight hours? Is going to be recorded here. And then actual hour work. If you're supposed to work for eight hours and actually work for six hours, it's going to be showing. Uh, but if you were supposed to work for eight hours and you work 10 hours, then you have overtime and the company will see you as a very hard one, they will pay you overtime if that is uh, agreed on that. If you do overtime, that is going to be paid. Then we have an uh, hours tract. On the hours tract, it's going to show you uh, time tract. You see zero minutes here because we've not tracked anything. Once it's configured, we show what we are doing. Like for instance, I'm working here. If I'm working with a Zoom and the Catro and um, let me say Techno, these two application is configured, or mainly I'm supposed to be I'm, I'm working with Zoom like now. If they they have employed me as their teacher, uh, working with Zoom. It will show how many hours I, I spent on Zoom teaching. So it's going to record it. So, and like for uh, project, uh, some of you that um, will be going to work with me uh, teaching, I'm going to use Time Doctor. If you if you are meant to be teaching and you are there <clears throat> watching YouTube, <clears throat> watching movies in YouTube, I don't know. <clears throat> so projects, projects and tasks. So we have not configured any projects and tasks, so it's not showing. Oh, but the ones we configured and added, it, it, we create a project and then create tasks, it then starts showing here. So, and this is a um, timeline. So on that timeline, the here, never track time. Timeline we track. My, activity, my timeline, what I'll be doing with my time. Time tracks, time started, end time. AM, these are times can be configured to track. So, but we don't have any 
timeline here. Here is the computer time, and this is manual time, and this mobile time. So I'm just showing the interface, how it works. So, and Time Doctor, I've got two applications, mobile application and the uh, website application. So you can download the mobile application and be using it. You know, you can use it on your web application. So you can sign on this site and the workers, what the workers need to, they need to download an application which they use to be logging in. And once you log in with the application, it will start recording. Once it, it, uh, it, it, it becomes a kind of a login system for you where you come to work, you log in. So you need to log in using Time Doctor for, for your activity to be uh, tracked. And here is going to be the custom exports. So what you're here, like we need to get the report of everything that is happened, you need to check, check in where what you need to, to be um, extracted and uh, become a report that maybe the management will be looking at. So if you want it, uh, productivity time, you want uh, uh, productivity time, if you want to, whatever one, you, you can check them here and then you click export or you download here. Here you click export here, you now download it in a, a printable format that can be shared within the organization. So this is uh, how this report, how you generate everything you need to do with the timeline. So, and there is a um, time edit. Here is where you, the admin, need to edit, configure, the time doctor on projects. How many hours, how many minutes, or, or pay tax. So you, you kind of, you plan the project. It's good for project managers for tracking um, time uh, the project team members spend doing their job. So the setting is from here. So, This is the bill setting. So if I want to subscribe or upgrade, but I'm using a free version. So if I want to really, I can just click here and make payment and upgrade. Companies use them. I'm not using it now because I don't have the need for it. But once I have, people working with me remotely, I'll get it to track them. So project and um, and their task setting. Here, if you want to start a project, which we are going to start very soon, some of you will need to be working as a virtual assistant in so many of our projects that is going on, and so many of our social media channel. We can create a project here, the project we want to be working on. Like some of you will be working on Facebook, uh, monitor, working on our channels, uh, brand awareness, and, and some of you will be working with um, some other, other projects. We're going to create all these projects here. For instance, if you create the projects here, you create that's where you create do the shadow. For instance, if I want to create a project here, I'll put the name of the project and uh, that's it. The company and specific group and the specific people within the project and click and the project will be created. And then I'll create tasks and then assign people to the project. Once I assign people to the project, the people will be working on the project. And then the time doctor will start his work, monitoring people on that particular project. And within that project, I will create the application you are going to use to work. For instance, if you are a project manager, 
I will create like you are going to be working, tracking your project using Basecamp. So I will create, I will um, add an application like Basecamp. If you are a business analyst, I'm going to be creating application you are going to be using like um, uh, Lucid Charts. And that's it for you, like uh, virtual assistant. You'll be using like event management, uh, time um, calendar management, uh, so many other applications, like um, depending on uh, Google Workspace. We configure all these applications we'll be using so that whenever you click using that particular application, Time Doctor will recognize that application and start recording your time. We are not creating projects now. So productivity setting. We don't have any productivity. Here is a for users. Can add um, can add user from here. Group. Can add group. And what the group you give them access on the data they can see. And the, the, the access on data they cannot see. So I can create a group so that this group are virtual assistant. And I'll limit the number of uh, my data they can have access to what they can see and what they cannot see. And say so this is project managers. This is the, the what they can see and what they cannot see. So, an email notification I can here I can con configure a push notification so that I and my, the project team they can be getting a trigger or a notification on any activity anything that is uh, related within the project you are managing or activity or maybe someone mentioned your name you get an alert so and here is integration this is where you integrate all the application that you want to be working with. For instance, here, you can see all the apps here. You can see Asana, you can see Avaza, you can see Microsoft Azure. And that's where you start integrating the application that you need to be working um, with. So, So once you start adding an integrating application, they will start um, appearing here. But for now, we don't know have any application integrated that we're working with. So this company setting, just for company and everything about the company, permissions, billing, and the rest of them. So, so this way you can add and edit your, your work schedule. And this is payroll. This is the payroll system. This is where they are going to, this payroll will calculate how many hours you worked and then put the amount of money they are supposed to be earning and actually the amount of money you've earned at the end of the week or month. Here you can invite the users, people you'll be working with, you know, add email and they will get it from their email and then they will join. So then if you are working as a DC, uh, here, this way, you invite your project team or your, your employees where that we're working and they'll be managing. So, and this is um, where you can download Time Doc. So, you can download the application. You click here, you download it on your on your laptop where you use where you log in. And you start uh, once you log in and you are recorded, you are configured, your email is there. Once you use the email to log in, you start 
recording everything you are doing. This is the window. And if you are using Mac OS, yeah, if you are using Ubuntu, or what we are using is Windows. So if you need to download, you are going to be downloading Windows. And this is the company you are working with. For instance, Caproid. So that's it. And that's it all for, for, for Time Doctor. It's very simple and very, very powerful um, interface. So if you want to see what the whole team are doing, this is a team um, dashboard. Here you can see what everyone is doing. The whole activity, everything, the whole everything that's going on will be showing here. For instance, if we are working, you see total projects. For instance, if you're like a program director, you see all the projects you are managing. Um, haven't tracked time yet because I've not done anything. Total users, total number of people they are managing, we show here. Uh, number of hours tracked, everything we showing here. And you can see, and these are the all the application and websites we'll be doing. You and your team will be working on everything we show here. So if you navigate to any website that is not recorded here or not integrated here, you are losing your money on your own. So that's it for Time Doctor. You go and create your own account and navigate around, just have a feel of how Time Doctor is. There is different experience that I'm showing you how it works and uh, that you sign in and see how it works yourself. So thank you for, for being part of this time, Doctor. If you have any question, you can ask. If you don't have any question, then we move on to the next uh, two. Okay. Yeah, like if you download this application, this is how it's going to be showing on your laptop. This is the, the downloaded version, or if you download the mobile, but this is how it's going to look. So if you are working, it's going to be reading like this. So next we move to Zoom. Zoom is a video conferencing and it's very essential for everyone, especially remote assistants who need to meet with executive and their team from anywhere. So what we are using now is Zoom. All of us can see how powerful Zoom is. Zoom is now the new system of education, new system of meeting, new system of doing everything, you know? We are transiting to the next generation of life, of activity. Our system of education, which all of us pass through, is going to be a history. A time will come where we are not going to be, uh, lecturers are not going to be teaching in classroom with uh, with a uh, chalk and the uh, blackboard, this era has gone. Whether you like it or not, it's going to just be like uh, uh, landline phone. Some people never believe that landline will become a history, but today it is. And when we started using um, uh, GSM, conventional GSM like Nokia. Uh, 3310, we thought that we have arrived, you know? But we don't know that, we, 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 we just said, uh, we, we have not even started the journey. Now everybody, whether you like it or not, even my mom now, 
she 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 upgraded to 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 WhatsApp now, making WhatsApp video calls. This is the era. She can't if you want to she, if you want to collaborate with her children. This is the only way to do that. So Zoom have come to stay, and it's very beautiful. It makes life easy. It transforms the way we meet, the way we communicate, with the way we walk. So, and here, Zoom have a, a, a blackboard where you can equally use to teach here, you know? So, for instance, um, let me see where the is. I have my blackboard here. Book Zoom have got a very good, beautiful blackboard. Everything you can think of is here in Zoom. You know? So, and um, some of the features is a Zoom phone for full VOIP access, you know, for internet uh, voice over internet uh, provider access. We don't normally use that a lot. Is um, the only few people that make use of that. So many of us, what we use is just this conventional video conferencing. So we use Zoom to meet for web-based conferencing. Uh, this is the which is the primary uh, use of the Zoom globally all over the world. We use Zoom for video webinars, town hall meetings, which require uh, a premium capacity of up to 500 viewers. We can use Zoom to do a lot of meeting. I'm developing. Um, uh, an application like Zoom, exactly like Zoom, which will be out very soon. Because the, the business of working remotely, having meeting is increasing. And it continue to increase and increase, which over time, our system of education, everything will become via video and the rest of them. So this is the next generation business so get you, the having such a business at the earlier stage you might not really be giving money but over time when you gain popularity you start making the society so um business messaging with zoom uh, Zoom is equally like um, a Slack, you know, where you can uh, do messaging, you know. So most of the, uh, the 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 features in a Slack, Zoom are trying to, you know, get all of them to develop and then deploy all of them. So now, like Zoom and Slack are trying to, and some most of the uh, features in um, Zoom, Slack is trying to, so Zoom and Slack are kind of competing, trying to be providing similar services. Room, Zoom do breakout rooms, which enables private conference room within a large group of, so if you have a very large group of meeting, you can break them up. Uh, you know, you can say this group, like what I'm doing, if you like this, we are doing now, I can say, okay, I will break this um, group, this uh, class into two groups and give you people some tasks. So I can say group A, I'll break group B and group B. Zoom can do that. And at the end of the day, all of us will converge again here, maybe to make a presentation general. So you can see that Zoom is very powerful. It's, uh, it's only that some of us don't know how to use Zoom or don't know what Zoom but Zoom is a very powerful application. There are so many others like um, uh, Google Meet. Um, it's not only Zoom, it's not the only application. They have uh, 
um, go to meeting. We have a Microsoft team and a lot of a lot of them. You know, but Zoom is um, uh, is ranked number one out of all these uh, applications. So. Zoom will have a custom and the building virtual background that allow you to hide your personal space. For instance, like this, I'm working with you and I don't I want you people to see how my uh, this my small office look like. I can hide it and bring a very a very luxurious office. And you think I'm I'm I'm, I'm doing this meeting from uh, Asu Rock when you look at my background. So Zoom can give you the kind of background, executive background we want. So you have everything uh, um, integrated. So, and um, Zoom have recording session where you can record and then transcript. So like I said, uh, the era of um, Blackboard is gone, you know, after Zoom, you, 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 no, no one should be recording or even writing when the, the class is going on meeting because everything is being recorded. And after then you extract it. So this time what we use is a visual note. Like what is I'm recording is visual note. The era of um, physical notes is no longer there. Let me tell you some of the children they born these days, there are so many of them are going to be struggling in writing because most of the activities they have done are, you know, is no longer in uh, in hard writing in hardware. Everything is now application. So and that is the way the world is going. And all we can do is to learn and follow suit, or you'll be left behind because we cannot change the trend. So after Zoom, a transcription will be generated from the meeting text session, which can be downloaded and uh, used um, officially. So that is a uh, Zoom. So there's um, uh, there's not much I can. Uh, uh, we all know how Zoom. We'll be using Zoom, but. I can't tell you to go and create account in Zoom. You know how to use Zoom. But the issue is that so many of you can log in in Zoom when somebody, but you don't know how to create um, and the whole event in Zoom, which I want you people to do. It's going to be one of our assignments, which I want everyone to hold a session and make a brief presentation one by one so that I say make sure that everyone can knows how to create an event, hold an event, hold meeting, facilitate meeting through Zoom. So that is um, all I have to say about Zoom. So in terms of Zoom, I'm not going to do much practical work. Let's just try in Vasi, change this our meeting uh, um, where we meet here. So we are now in a new environment. That is Zoom for you. And let's look at. This again, I want to take you people to classroom or conference or that is it in Zoom. See? Okay. Let me open my video so you can see I didn't put my lights. If I put my light, you'll see me very well. So that is Zoom. And
You can see we are now in another way having this meeting. Oh. So, there are so many of them, you know, so many of them in Zoom. So. So I can change Zoom the way I want. Can can change it the, any way I want. You can see. So so let's go back to our guy. So that is Zoom, and I will leave you to explore Zoom on your own. Yeah. Okay. We move to Slack. Slack enables swift real-time communication. It brings team, team communication and collaboration into one place. So Slack is very, very powerful features for communication and collaboration, sharing of documents. So, and companies find it very useful. It's gradually replacing, um, email email um, email system of uh, communication and sharing file because mainly every communication and file sharing goes in real time in slack so it's gradually taking over email system of uh, sharing documents and sharing messages So, and these are the main features of uh, Slack. Some of us uh, must be using it already. Like I said, they are, Slack is trying to be Zoom and Zoom is trying to be Slack. They are mainly they're almost the same thing and they are working to be the same thing. Slack is for file and document sharing. Slack is not an excellent re a repository for documentation, which is not a good because uh, it's not um, good like uh, you see Basecamp have a very good way of uh, documentation. Slack doesn't have this kind of uh, uh, activity or uh, structure in Slack. Group messaging for easy collaboration a quick group allow so most of the time um people tend to be using slack now mainly slack another thing with uh, you can look at like um let's see whatsapp application is a very good way of collaboration but one thing with whatsapp is that if you're using whatsapp every file shared to you with downloaded on your phone and we will be messy leaving your phone a lot of things we even the one you don't want so you so that's one area that whatsapp is not good for slack some of all these things are not so that's why so many companies prefer instead of using like whatsapp app they create slack where they can collaborate share document and slack you can connect slack with so many third party application where you can share your application to like um hotspot and the rest of them so it's very very powerful so we have access uh, encryption for data uh security so you can transfer data securely um through Slack, 
one good uh, thing here is that with all this uh, encryption, so many email applications doesn't have this uh, uh, encryption. And that's why um, so many times the, some of these uh, fraudsters can easily hack into your email and uh, do a lot of things. But this modern application, they are, they are taking this uh, data protection, data security very important. So, and it's just a one click and you enter the, the Slack meeting, just like a Zoom. So like I said, Zoom is trying to be Slack and the Slack is trying to be Zoom in the messaging uh, features. Notification to uh, indicate the status with Slack a slack in a meeting you can indicate i mean a meeting do not disturb or availability everything you can use slack to indicate what you are doing when you want people not to disturb you you can equally just uh, use slack to um identify that and let the people know your work status at the particular moment so that Maybe if somebody trying to get at you, you can, when they see a status that you are busy, they can just uh, stay away. Guest access are shared to channels to, to extend chats to, 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 to outsiders. Slack have a way that what is being, uh, what you chat on the Slack, uh, can be seen by outsiders, you know, who is not a, a logged into your channel, but you can configure it is based on the way you want it. You want, like you can see this one here, you can see some of the other things, the outsiders can see some of the activities. So some see it that is a kind of, they can use it, can be kind of uh, uh, promoting some of the activities, or products, uh, which is very, some things are very comfy and very uh, exciting. So Slack got all these things that makes it very outstanding. As if only I've, I've got a link I will share for you to go and uh, look at Slack, how have a bit of more knowledge about Slack, but we we'll equally have a, a fast, um, we have a fast look in our Slack to see how Slack looks in real time. Okay, let's go to uh, slack.com. Oh, time doctor closed. Oh. This is slack.com. This is the home page. So here you can sign up with your email. Or you can sign in from here, or you can use your Google account to automatically sign up or sign in. Now I've what I'll do is that. I'm going to sign in using my Google account. And they will authenticate me and That's it. I'm inside Slack. So all this you can create channels. 
channel in Slack is a kind of uh, event or activity or project. So once you create a channel, you can invite people to a channel and you start interacting, collaborating within the channel. For this, I want to, let's say, let me um, add a channel, say, create a new channel. Um, say, So, for instance, if you want to create a, a channel, a, a, a work on a project, maybe uh, capitalize social media accounts, you can create it from here. And you can make this um, channel, which is, a, I will use another one, Another word for you to 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 announce. a channel can be a project or an event. So I can make it private so that nobody, you see, I've locked it, it's locked now. Nobody can see what I'm doing within my channel. And I can make it open. And then um, I'll create. So and then I'll add members to this uh, this my channel if i want all the projects everybody working in um Catroid, which is in slack can see what i'm doing but if i want i can see i can select project team only people that i want to work with within this uh, uh within this uh, channel uh, I'll leave it to every member can see it and I'll create. So now this is a channel here and anything I type, you will see it. So, you know, this channel is now active so and people can start <coughs> people can start um contributing you know and from here i can add people to this channel i can add all of you here by creating here and i'll be adding all of you to this channel so like here, I say that uh, a Slack is trying to be um, a Zoom and Zoom is trying to be, uh, so from here, but you can start having video meeting, but you can see the pro video clip. So uh, we need to um, in order to use this particular feature is not part of the free um, this thing. actually that's how they how they make their own money so we so, want to be using video big big companies use this so and they like it they don't mind paying because it gives them the real thing they want. So now I don't have any user, anybody I'm working with. Now I'm working with a, with a robot, Slack robots, and that's the person I'm working with within this my team now. So with here, we can be discussing what to work in this our project or with this our group, we can be collaborating. So many companies, that will employ as a virtual um, assistant, they can add you up within this 
group so that you'll be monitoring what is going on within any particular channel. I told you that channel can be a project. You can be monitoring whatever is going on within this uh, project and be documenting, writing, review, starting meeting, following up, creating events, depending on their work schedule. But that's how you can work here as a virtual assistant. So just like you working in a, 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 um, a WhatsApp group or Facebook group, you know, groups are now big business. If you go to Facebook, so many groups, Facebook, so many groups are now, they are now turning so many groups into mini marketplace where people can come and sell their food. Group uh, activity is now a serious, this is just a group activity. So you can create a channel, call it your channel is a group or a project. So that is how Slack work. You can come and create an account here, it's free. Um, see my free trial is ending soon and learn how Slack actually works. And that is much we can say about Slack for now. So Slack is very, very uh, good. From here, you can do a lot of activities. I like you want to integrate this as now. There's a lot of application, third party application. You create it here. You can integrate it here. Like now, if I want to integrate my uh, Google Drive here, so that from here, I can automatically be getting, accessing my Google Drive and seeing what is the uh, uh, going on within my Google Drive. I can equally integrate Zoom here from this lag. I can just click and have a Zoom meeting with you, my, my project team. I can put my Google Calendar, Trello, Twitter, can integrate my Twitter here so that I, I can be getting activity from my page in Twitter. Or from, from this lag, I can be sending activities from Slack to Twitter or from Twitter to Slack. So these are the things here, you see all their, that's why it's very, very popular. Companies like it because from their Slack, they can do a lot of things, you know? So that's how you can integrate your third party application here, so. Like this here, uh, you now take me to my Google, my Google Drive authentication. After authentication from Slack, I can have access. I just click here, I have access to my, all the documents in my Google Drive. So I can easily pull them from Slack if I need it, maybe for meeting or for anything. All right. We move so that um, we look at one more thing. We've not had a class in a while, so don't worry. So. so that's like. So the next thing we're looking at uh, is uh, hop spots. And you guys have already created account in hop spots. You know, at, at, at this point, you, you people should be teaching me about hop spots because you already have account there. Hop spots. Um, is a CRM, Customers Relationship Management Software, which is now like um, the heart of so many businesses, more especially 
startups, small, small businesses. And you know that small, small businesses in number are more than all these big, big businesses. So there is a lot of activities going on with this uh, particular uh, customer relationship management software. It is where all your customers contact information and activity reside. And where your customers are is where your interest lies because these are the people that uh, patronize you, makes you rich, you know. If there is no customer for your business, then there is nothing you are doing. So this is where you can easily manage your customers. It provides a powerful, 360 degree view of your business. So from here, you can see almost everything that's going on within your business, all the activities, your business activities. It's a lightweight, uh, popular alternative to Salesforce. Salesforce is a kind of a, a bigger, uh, a heavy weight to, to this. And Dynamics 365 is a heavy weight to, to Salesforce. So HubSpot combines simplicity, cost effectiveness, and scalability. It's free. And it has a paid version as well. But the free version is a highly functional for small uh, businesses. So like we that are small here in our activities, or we are small business, now we can use HubSpot to do a lot of activities, manage our businesses the way we want it. You know, ranging from contact management, calls and email logs, pipeline management, integration with applications such as Slack and Gmail, and the customer chat. With integration with its marketing automation, it has a marketing automation, which is very, very powerful. You can build email campaign, build marketing workflow, and run social media campaign from here. So you can do a lot of things from uh, Workspot. You can automate a lot of posts here that can be delivered to your social media account. So most of the posts we see in social media accounts, they don't just, uh, most of the, uh, the, the account, they don't go to social media to start typing. They package it, process it, do everything they want, and then they automate it. They say that at a so, so, so period of time, uh, at five o'clock, uh, in the evening where they know that people might start now using social media. They will say, deliver the post. And by five o'clock or six o'clock, the post will arrive. That is when people are just finishing work and want to relax and come into social media. Then they'll start releasing music. you start seeing that, you know? So that's how you can use uh, this thing. Um, the marketing automation to, to work on so many of your business activities. Very powerful. I used it in the past, but I've not used it of recent. I might go back, but the issue that I have, um, I have my own custom, I built my own custom um, CRM, which I'm using. And that is a DG breed. I use it, it's even more powerful than this uh, um, this uh, HubSpot. It gives me everything I want. Yeah, but I spend a lot of money to develop the application. So we are going to look briefly at Hotspot, and we'll call it a night.
along with um, along with Slack, close this Slack and let's see. Oops. Sports. Login with using my Gmail. I don't have any account, I don't want to let me in because let's see. I'm looking for a quick breakthrough, but it's not allowing me. I don't have time to start creating this account now.
Yeah, I wanted a quick navigation, but you refused. So I have to follow the due process. So these are all the areas in Slack that you can um, actually explore. But these are contacts, companies, calls, activity fees. So this will come. I can store all the contacts. You know, these are you see contacts here, all your customers' contacts, you know, can be here. And your email, their phone number, and uh, you can assign this contact to maybe some people within the organization to manage manage them. So so this is where you manage customers um, information. So Then companies, <coughs> companies that um, you are working with, this is where you can actually manage the companies, assign the companies to who manage the company number, everything about the companies you are, work, you are working with. Like, so this is calls. So, all the call data. So call transcript. So some of these ones are paid version. Can pay to to have like some of these activities. Activity feed. So when we start activity, we can each actually get our activity feed here. What is going on from here? And list. So then conversation, this is your uh, inbox. So from here you can integrate some of uh, your emails like Gmail into this your email can be integrated. So Chat flows like integrate uh, messenger, Facebook messenger, so that you can chat from somebody from in Facebook messenger from here, and automatically you the person will become a um, a lead or a customer. From there, this is how you. You, you, you look for customers. Every activity about your company will be logged in here. And from here, you start following up the customer to convert the customer to your customer. And here you can do your templates, the kind of email template you use for your email. Here you can do a custom email template, design it the way you want. So, and this is um, here you can launch your your ad email landing page. So this is where you, you integrate your, um, your your website with the 
this application, like you see so many websites, once you fill a form in that website, you think it's going into the website. Some of those websites does not have a back end, your static website. So you can use uh, this, um, this um, HubSpot. So any form you are filling on their website is coming down here. In, is coming into this customer relation and you manage everything from there. So this can become a, a, a back end for your website. So, and here you can do your campaign, promotion, social media. So there's a lot of things you can do here. So Slack, I mean, there's, um, uh this uh customer relationship is a course of its own so we might not dive deep into it it's going to be a course on its own but as a virtual assistant what matters is you know the primary functionalities and how to do some certain things like contact management uh, companies, you have your clients working with. So, but these are high levels. So I might not, we are not going to dive into campaign all these things. It's beyond this, this scope of this course. You know, this, sales days and the rest of them, forecast, tax, documents, they are um, beyond this particular, our scope. So this can be handled on the customer's customer relationship management apprenticeship, which will be coming soon. We can create ticket from here and manage. So, like um, this is the mainly some of the mainly activities. If you are working as a customer support uh, officer. A customer support manager, this is one of the main things you are going to be doing. Managing tickets. You know, when somebody creates a ticket, submit a ticket, you are going to receive the ticket from here, manage the ticket, and you know, that's it. Like for instance, let's say create a ticket here. If you create a ticket from here, ticket, let's say ticket name, Create the, the 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 pipeline is going to be support which ticket new ticket and uh, ticket description here is not um, mandatory and here you sign oh no I will manage this particular ticket or I can assign this particular ticket to to carry on to manage and then assign priority. This is high and date. I'm creating this ticket is uh, actually today. And
a ticket is created. So we can create a ticket, and manage ticket. So can be using that how all this customer support. This is what they do. Like now you are talking with a, a customer, for instance, we are working with um, Catroy. The customer is trying to, to place an order in our e-commerce website and the customer is struggling. So we take the name of that customer, that customer B is struggling with our application, which is a Catroid e-commerce application. So we take the name and then we describe the kind of um, issue the customer is having. And then we follow it up. Somebody here will down manage this um, ticket. Charles is managing this ticket and it's very, very, uh, is a high priority. So, So this is where how you can manage a ticket as a customer support person. And we want to preview and see what's going on here. And manage the ticket and document everything that is going on here. You can add the contact number here. You can add if there's a company, you can add the company. You can add a lot of art. If uh, something, you can even tell the customer to screenshot his uh, face and they attach it so that if you cannot resolve it, you can escalate this to the next line support that is going to resolve this issue for you. As the first line support, you need to be highly detailed when contact, co uh, collecting information from customer if they are struggling. And from there, if you are struggling, let's say you are struggling, you find out that you cannot um, manage this ticket, you can change the ownership who is managing it. You can create, you know, I have only, it's only me working in this company as well. Well, like, for instance, we have so many other people like IT specialists or network analysts or the rest of them. We can, from here, select whom to hand over this uh, particular ticket to carry on from where you, where you, you stopped. And that's how you can use this. So this is one of the simplest way we can use this. To, to manage customers' um, queries. We call it an uh, incident, incident management, or incident uh, <coughs> handling or reporting. But that's it. And at the end of the day, yeah, action, you can, you know, edit or whatever from here, or you can import this particular activity. So that is much we can do. Like I said, we're not going to be diving deep because this um, application have a lot of uh, a lot of things that is way beyond our scope. You can integrate third-party application from this their marketplace. So so if you want to integrate, you can integrate based on the kind of uh, application you are looking for. Let's just say, a 
mail can look for uh, the kind of e commerce you want to API. From here, you can, you know, connect to any API of e commerce, like our capital. If I connect it with our API here, all the data, everything going on in our caproid will be getting it uh, down here in our in our um, hotspot um, uh, space here. So we can be managing our activity from our caproid from here instead of managing it from our own back end because we've connected the API from here. So, well, this is a bit, um, a bit technical for us. It's not for, not for customers, it's not for virtual assistants. So it's, this is a bit of a develop, developer's job, but I'm just trying to show you people how powerful this can be. You know, you can do your settings from here and manage your, your profile. So, so that is it for customers, um, HubSpot customers relationship management. So, and that is it for tonight. Uh, let me give you people um, opportunity to go and sleep. Yeah. So thank you, some of you that uh, stayed back. You know, it's noisy, but we are getting there. So that is it for hot spots. With the knowledge you have, you can manage it as a as a virtual assistant, a customer support. You know, can do basic things as a customer support uh, assistant or customer support uh, officer or manager. But if you need to to progress as a man, a customer support manager, you need to think a customer support uh, manager course, but just managing tickets, managing contact, and the rest of them, this is just the basic, it's for, just for you to understand the interface, and that's it. So any question at this point? Good. Okay, no question. So, hey, Jack, I see you. You, you, you come today. <laughs> Good evening, sir. You be water. Good evening, sir. Uh, what everybody is now doing is uh, adult <laughs> education. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Everybody is doing IT adult education is very important. And the world is fast changing. So I wish you guys good night rest. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night, good night sir. Good night.